Today we are going to learn about Krebs cycle or also known as TCA cycle. So our main reference here would be Campbell and Farrell 7 edition. Part 1, the overview of TCA cycle. Okay, from free previous lecture, uh, this is how glycolysis, ethanol and lactate being formed. In the process of glycolysis, we basically produce two ATP molecules. This glycolysis, basically, we only collect small amount of useful potential energy that is stored in chemical binds of glucose. So to harvest the full remaining energy of glucose, we have to undergo the aerobic cell respiration, which is only happen with the presence of oxygen. So basically, in glycolysis, only we produce two ATP and then we also produce NADH. But the remaining food potential of glucose is fully harvested in the next cycle, which is TCA cycle. So with a single molecule of glucose molecule, two pyruvate molecule, we only uh, we not only produce ATP molecule, but also collecting four electron by NAD plus and producing NADH2. So glucose is oxidized to pyruvate, which will enter mitochondria and undergo the decarboxylation to form acetyl-CoA. So in this process, it releases carbon dioxide and two electron. Okay, this acetyl-CoA, it donates a portion of its structure to the next process of TCA cycle. So this happened before the TCA cycle, okay, which glucose is oxidized to pyruvate and then it will enter mitochondria. It will undergo decarboxylation to form acetyl-CoA. So this we will look into it later. Okay, in this process, it releases one carbon dioxide and two electron. Okay, the central role of the TCA cycle. So three processes play central role in this aerobic metabolism. One is TCA cycle, citric acid cycle. Two is electron transport and three is oxidative phosphorylation. So this process operate together in aerobic metabolism. Okay. In TCA cycle, it includes this metabolism consists of catabolism and anabolism. We have learned what is catabolism, which is the oxidative breakdown of nitrogen and anabolism, the reductive synthet synthesis of biomolecule. So basically, TCA cycle is amphibolic, which plays both role catabolism and anabolism. So this is the central relationship of TCA cycle to catabolism. Okay, we have glucose he molecule here which undergo glycolysis. Okay, we have in stage one of acetyl CoA production. Okay, we have glucose here, fatty acid, amino acid. And then it undergo glycolysis, glucose undergo glycolysis. Okay. And it will produce okay the central relationship of the citric acid cycle to catabolism. So we have stage one here. We have glucose molecule, fatty acid molecule, and amino acid. So glucose will undergo glycolysis, producing pyruvate, and extract the acetyl-CoA from the pyruvate and then it will enter the TCA cycle. In this TCA cycle, okay, it, later on it will go for electron transport chain ETC and oxidative phosphorylation to harvest the full potential, energy potential of glucose. Similarly with fatty acid and amino acids, okay, this molecule it will enter the TCA cycle as the intermediate. So both will produce acetyl-CoA, fatty acid and amino acid, and this acetyl-CoA will enter the TCA cycle. So we'll look into it much more later. 
So where does this citric acid cycle take place? So basically, in eukaryotes, the glycolysis takes place in cytosol and uh, TCA cycle takes place in the mitochondria matrix. Okay, this is uh, the overview of what happened in uh, TCA cycle, what happened after glycolysis. So we have pyruvate molecule here from glycolysis and then this pyruvate, it will undergo some sort of reaction before it can enter the TCA cycle. So this reaction is what we call as pyruvate decarboxylation, which uh, will produce acetic-CoA and later on enter the TCA cycle. So, this is the steps before entering TCA cycle. Pyruvate decarboxylation. So, pyruvate decarboxylation, it must take place before TCA cycle begins, which they are very important in glucose uh, net as it commits pyruvate into carrying out TCA cycle or lipid synthesis. So it has two uh, options, either to enter TCA cycle or it can enter lipid synthesis. Okay, glucose can be transformed to pyruvate via glycolysis and some under certain circumstances, pyruvate is converted to glucose via gluconeogenesis. So if we have plenty of oxygen in the cell, what happens is uh, the cell wants to produce ATP molecules and then pyruvate will enter the mitochondria and will be transformed to acetyl-CoA. So this acetyl-CoA will then enter TCA cycle and ETC or it can commit themselves this the the pyru, uh, the acetyl coa it can commit themselves to the second pathway which to, is to produce lipid so in this pyruvate dehydrogenase it it is a complex so it is responsible for the conversion of pyruvate to carbon dioxide and the acetyl portion of acetyl coa so we have five enzymes in the complex. Basically, we have E1, E2, and E3. So first is pyruvate dehydrogenase, which also known as E1. So it catalyzes the redox decarboxylation reaction. Second enzyme, dehydrolipoyl transacetylase E2, it catalyzes transfer of acetic groups. Third Enzyme is dehydrolipoyl dehydrogenase, also known as E3. It reforms the oxidized version of lipoamide. And also we have pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase and pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase. So this E1, E2 and E3, they are involved in the conversion of pyruvate to acetic-CoA. And pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase and phosphatase, they are used to control the complex. So this is the mechanism of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It involves three steps. Basically, uh, it has three steps. So step one is where pyruvate lost carbon dioxide and produce hydroxyethyl TPP, H-E-T-P-P. Okay, the second step is the active form of lipoic acid or also known as lipoamide is bound to the enzyme and produce the dehydrolipoid trap. Sorry. So in step two, the active form of lipoic acid is bound to the enzyme and the enzyme dehydrolipoid transacetylase E2 by an amide bond to the amino group of lysine. So this HE group, the hydroxyethyl group, is oxidized and transferred to a sulfur atom of a reduced form of lipoamide. Okay, lipoamide and lipoic acid is the same. The lipoamide is then reduced to dehydrolipoamide. So we can see from the diagram here. So the first steps. Okay, this is the first steps of uh, the mechanism. We have pyruvate molecule here. Okay, this is part of acetyl of pyruvate molecule. 
So in step one, pyruvate lost carbon dioxide. Okay. This part is lost as carbon dioxide. And this part is acetyl. When pyruvate lost the carbon dioxide, this small portion of pyruvate, it will attach to TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate, and produce hydroxyethyl TPP, or also known as HETPP. So this is catalyzed by the first enzyme, E1, pyruvate dehydrogenase. So for the second steps, this hydroxyacetyl groups, HETTP, is then transferred to lipoic acid here. So remember, lipoic acid is bound to the enzyme. So this hydroxyethyl TPP, HETTP, is then transferred to lipoic acid, the, this group, okay? and oxidized to form acetyl dehydrolipoamide, the big portion. So what happened in step 2 is TPP, thymine pyrophosphate, is released. For the step number 3, the acetyl groups is then transferred to coenzyme A. Coenzyme A as a carrier. So this acetyl groups that is bound at uh, together with lipoic acid will then transfer to coenzyme A producing acetyl CoA. And later on, this is what we call as dehydrolipoamide. So this dehydrolipoamide can be reoxidized okay, and produce lipoamide. Remember, in this, we uh, the substrate is TPP. So at step number two, TPP is being uh, regenerated. Okay, in step number four. Remember that we use lipoamide, lipoic acid. So in step number four, lipoamide is regenerated back. Okay, how lipoamide is being regenerated? So in the last step of uh, the mechanism, to regenerate lipoamide, we have this FAD. So FAD attached on the enzyme, it acts as a carrier and it transfer two electron from hydrolipoamide okay this hydrolipoamide has two electron so fad pick up this electron act as a carrier and transfer the electron to nad plus and form nadh plus h plus so that is how lipoamide is being regenerated and the cycle can continue. Okay, so we have the 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 uh, explanation. We have the explanation here, and you can refer to the explanation here with this figure. Okay, so to summarize this mechanism. Huh? The two carbon unit needed at the start of the TCA cycle is obtained by converting pyruvate to acetyl CoA. So this conversion it requires three primary enzymes of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex E1, E2, and E3, as well as the cofactor TPP is used in step one. Remember, FAD and NAD plus, FAD in later stage, the last stage of mechanism. NAD plus is the acceptor of electron as well as lipoic acid or lipoamide, which we use in step number three. Okay, and at the last stage, we regenerate back this lipoic acid. So the overall reaction of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is the conversion of pyruvate. NAD plus, remember we use NAD plus, coenzyme A, okay, to acetyl coenzyme A, NADH plus H plus, and carbon dioxide. So remember in this overall reaction, it doesn't show a FADH, uh, sorry, FAD, because FAD is bound on the enzyme and is only act as a carrier to carry electron and pass it to NAD plus 
to produce NADH plus H plus. So you have to remember, you have to understand the net reaction of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay, before we 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 enter another, before we finish this part, okay, how to regulate pyruvate decarboxylation? So glucose produce ATP okay and then before uh, and then okay glucose it produce ATP and also it produce pyruvate molecule so this pyruvate molecule is important before we enter TCA cycle so the pyruvate decarboxylation process reaction is also very important because it decide either it has to enter TCA cycle or it has to enter lipid anabol uh, lipid Synthesis. So it depends on the cell. Um, it depends on the cell needs. Okay. If our cell has plenty of ATP molecule, okay. If we have plenty of ATP molecule, meaning ATP is being produced. Okay. What are the intermediates that is that are produced to produce ATP? So this intermediate basically are uh, acetyl-CoA, uh, NADH, as well as the ATP itself. So if the cell has plenty of ATP molecule, it also will have plenty of high intermediate in providing ATP such as NADH and acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA will act as allosteric inhibitor and bind to the complex pyruvate dehydrogenase complex as well as NADH will also inhibit this complex. So what happens if we have low ATP molecule? So why not you figure it out and jot it down? Okay, because I have mentioned if we have high ATP molecule, what are the inhibitor? So if it ha uh, so this if the cell has low ATP molecule, so what are the activator so just figure it out that is your uh, task to figure it out so end of part one